every dead black person the police find has crack sprinkled on them, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Who gets shot and sprinkles crack on themselves? Nobody will do that. Bam! Oh, oh. I don't want to leave no mysteries. I'm not saying I don't like police. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm just scared of them. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we want to call them too. Somebody broke into my house once. It's a good time to call them, but I don't know. Uh -uh, uh -uh. <laughs> house is too nice. It ain't a real nice house, but they never believe I lived it. Oh, he's still here. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Open and shut case, Johnson. I saw this once before when I was a rookie. Apparently, this nigger broke in and hung up pictures of his family everywhere. Well, let's sprinkle some crack on him and get out of here. Well, it seems the circus has come to town. Before I get into the heart of this evening's video address, I want to read for you what was going to be originally the video essay that I planned to deliver. This was sometime around 7 or 8 o'clock this morning when I was getting all this together, and it was in response to what the white media was putting out there for their CNN was putting out there from Sleaze Merritt and the disinformation that he was spreading. And it just goes to show that clearly this Dallas PD con game that they're running about the murder of Joshua Brown, they slapped this crap together. Clearly this was not very well planned at all. But let me read to you what was originally going to be my remarks that I had planned to give this evening. Quote, Since scaring us won't work, the Dallas PD now realizes they have to cover their tracks. So first... They throw up a wall of noise, get the conversation to be about Joshua Brown, have the mayor of Dallas say that any speculation other than the police is uncalled for, which really means that any speculation that asks did the police do this is wrong. You can speculate, just don't speculate about whether or not the police killed the key witness who put one of their own in prison. And of course, you bring in some Negro lawyer who never wins a case like Sleaze Merritt to claim to speak for the family of the deceased, and he will say that Brown had beef with someone. But whomever it was, surely it couldn't have been the police. Sleaze Merritt doesn't know who killed Joshua Brown, and he has absolutely no evidence that the police didn't do the kill, but take his word for it, it definitely couldn't have been the police. Next, the Dallas police will claim that some street punk did it, or some drug addict. That's the usual alibi. Say that whomever it was had drugs. That's what they said about Alton Sterling. That's what they tried to say about Trayvon Martin. That's what they tried to imply about Freddie Gray. And when that failed, they said it about his mother. When it comes to black men, whether it's Terrence Crutcher or whomever, you always say that it was drug-related. The hit on Joshua Brown has backfired, so now the Dallas police are trying to get a patsy in place to take the fall. You ever wonder why violent punks like Kendall Morris, who shot Joshua Brown last year, keep getting out of jail no matter how many black people they harm? Why it seems that there's some black criminals who the white injustice system completely is uninterested in locking up? It's because these are white supremacy's trigger men in our midst. They are white supremacy's hit men that they plant and allow to remain among the black community. The police have a lot of punks who are either working on their third strike or who have already done it, and the cops hold this over their heads. Do this kill for us, or plead to this crime, or you're going to do 50 years instead of a possible 5 to 10. These punks are the police's get-out-of-jail-free card. Cops brag all the time that they let so-called low-level offenders off the hook if they agree to help the police catch bigger criminals. Normally, they try to make it seem like they'll let low-level D-boys off the hook, but in reality, the guys who they're letting off the hook are trigger men, like Kendall Morris, who the police and the DAs work together in order to keep on the streets. 
So long as these black stealth killers don't go acting a fool with any white people, then the enforcement arm of white supremacy will allow them to remain at large. The white media has tipped the Dallas PD's hand. They've already shown us that yet again the fix is in. So I would expect them to make an arrest in this case, and I would expect the white media to make huge headlines about it. You're going to be seeing this everywhere. And I would expect whomever is arrested to be singing like a canary. They won't be exercising their right to remain silent. On the contrary, who or whomever the police pin this on will be only too happy to tell the public that they did it. And the white media, who had no interest in the deaths of black people before now, will be cheerfully carpet bombing the public with the headline that the Dallas police cracked the case and that all the people who said that the cops were responsible for killing Joshua Brown were wrong. They'll make a huge deal out of that one. Now, what you just heard me read was the remarks that I was originally planning to deliver this evening because I had read this morning a CNN story saying that Joshua Brown, the slain Amber Geiger trial witness, thought he was targeted in a 2018 shooting, attorney, that is, Slee's Merritt, says. And it's CNN basically having Lee Merritt laying the groundwork for what we now see the Dallas PD's talking point has been. You had Slee's out there doing everything he could to repeat every racist white supremacist talking point, saying that Joshua Brown was responsible for his own death because, well, he got into an altercation last year and he's been afraid ever since and he had beef. Quote, he, he being Slee's merit, said Brown had personal beef with people who did not know he was still in the city. Slee's merit kept banging that drum over and over again that, well, um, Joshua Brown, he had personal troubles with people in the city, and he was doing everything, all these extras to say, oh, well, it wasn't the cops, whoever it was, it wasn't, you know, Joshua Brown, he had personal issues with people, you know, he had conflicts with people on the street, you know. Very interesting you would say that. The only person he actually had any sort of conflict with was Kendall Morris, this stranger who came out of nowhere last year and tried to kill him. And according to Kendall Morris's own attorney, the Dallas investigators have not spoken with Morris. Not since Brown was killed. So the one person who the police know is on the streets and who had a violent altercation with Joshua Brown just a year ago, the cops are completely and thoroughly disinterested in speaking to him. I mean, yeah, he just tried to kill Joshua Brown last year. I mean, it's not as if he tried to hurt him or anything. Now, just to recap, for those of you who don't know, Joshua Brown and a friend were at a strip club in Dallas last year. This Kendall Morris individual comes up out of nowhere and decides that he's going to start some sort of violent altercation with Brown and his friend. Morris draws a gun, he shoots, and before when the shooting stops, Joshua Brown was shot in the foot, and his friend was shot dead. And Kendall Morris, well, he's on the streets tonight. He got some sort of sweetheart bail deal, and first of all, most black folks can't afford bail to begin with, and secondly, when the prosecution thinks they have a chance to put a black person in prison, they're not, not offering bail anyway, but Kendall Morris, some sort of special case, I suppose. Not only did they offer him bail, but he's one of the few black people who was able to make bail, and he's on the streets. The one guy who tried to kill Joshua Brown, and yet the police just decide, well, we're not going to talk to him. No, we're sure, we, we would think that he, would, he wouldn't have anything to do with something like this. That's, even if you want to believe that the police didn't have anything to do with murdering Joshua Brown, they certainly don't seem interested in any of the peop any of the other individuals who might have, as if the police wanted to stay as far away from Kendall Morris as possible. As if the police understood, we better, we don't want to get too close to Kendall Morris. Not sure what might happen. So that's the first thing that we need to get straight. While Slee's Merritt was talking about people who Joshua Brown had personal beef with. Yeah, but the police weren't interested in them. Now, he did point out that Joshua Brown was trying to keep a low profile until some of the heat from the strip club shooting died down. 
But what also happened to be clear was he did not want to testify. He was concerned not, not about some anonymous shooters on the street. It was the police that he was concerned about. Though Slee's Merritt says that Brown, he believes, Merritt, putting words in Brown's mouth, uh, putting words into the mouth of a dead man, Slee says, I think he had some apprehension about being seen as an informant or a snitch. Very interesting that he would say that, because apparently if he was concerned about being seen as an informant or a snitch, then why the hell, according to the Dallas PD, is this guy deciding to turn his apartment into an open-air drug market? So if you believe what Slee's Merritt says, you can't believe the Dallas PD. And if you believe what the Dallas PD says, you can't believe Slee's Merritt. And yet the white media does not point out this obvious contradiction. And that clown assistant police chief who was giving his little press conference today, it was only delivered for one thing and one thing only. So that he could try to help the white media could help him get it on the record that the Dallas PD had nothing to do with this kill. The Dallas PD had nothing to do with this kill. They didn't seem very interested in giving details. They seem much more interested in saying, the Dallas PD has investigated itself and we have determined that we had nothing to do with this murder. Well, who did? Well, it was Joshua Brown. It was just, he brought this on himself, you see, Joshua Brown, he's the reason that this happened. And that was the point that they had to reach. It couldn't be that Joshua Brown was the victim of a random act of violence. It couldn't be a random act of violence. It couldn't just be happenstance. It had to be that Joshua Brown did something that made it where he wound up dead. It had to be Joshua Brown's fault. They needed to have a, they need to invent a narrative that says that. Because we got a dirty Joshua Brown up. This man who they had no contact with before, this man who they had absolutely not even the insinuation of drugs, and the Dallas PD went over Joshua Brown's background with a fine-tooth comb, by the way. They've, been, they've had this guy under observation for at least a year, at least since he got shot. And yet in all that time, no mention of drugs before. No people in the public who, as the assistant police chief put it, we were tipped off to drugs in his apartment. Well, we were tipped off. The reason that we went in his apartment was we were tipped off to drugs, really. So you got this guy who apparently has been a big time dope dealer and nobody's ever tipped you off before now. He lived in an apartment complex where he had a cop, a racist cop, for a neighbor. And he was only a couple of blocks away from the nearest police precinct. And he's apparently he's dealing drugs right literally right under the cops noses, only a couple of blocks away from the police. And nobody noticed. Nobody tipped the police off. Nobody tipped the police off when he made the news when Joshua Brown was in the news last year for being shot. Nobody said, hey, Joshua Brown. Hey, I know a Joshua Brown. He's a dope dealer. He, do he deals drugs out of his apartment. Nobody tipped the police off then. When he was testifying a month ago, nobody looked and said, hey, that, I know that guy. He's, um, a, he's a drug dealer. Let me talk, tell the cops. The prosecution needs to know this. Do you know that you, better yet, I'll call the defense. Hey, did you know that that guy, who, the prosecution's key witness, is also a drug dealer? You want to ask him some questions about that? Gee, nobody brought that up then. It's as if there wasn't any evidence, as if there wasn't anything there, like the Dallas PD is making this up. This is the story that the Dallas PD and the white media are trying to run with, which nobody is believing. This is a ridiculous trial balloon. Three dudes from Alexandria, Louisiana, they are looking for some marijuana, but they're not going to go to New Orleans, which is only 200 miles away from them. They decide not to go to Baton Rouge, which is only 120 miles away. If they're so hot and bothered to get their hands on some Texas marijuana in specific, then why didn't they just go to Houston, which is only 240 miles away? Instead, these three drug dealers, they decide to pack up for a road trip. They skip all the major cities that are within spitting distance of them, and instead they go all the way to Dallas, which is over 300 miles away. That's a 600-mile round trip. Seems to me, to hear the Dallas PD tell it, these guys were not looking for drugs, they were looking for Joshua Brown. Well, to hear the Dallas PD tell it, well, I guess there's no drug dealers in New Orleans, huh? 
I guess there's no drug dealers in Baton Rouge. I guess there's no drug dealers in Houston. I mean, it's only the fourth largest city in America. So these drug dealers from central Louisiana, they decide to skip one of the largest, most populous cities in the hemisphere so they can go to Dallas to try to find some marijuana. Everyone from South Louisiana has folks in Houston. They got relatives and friends there because of the I-10, because of Interstate 10. If somebody really feels the need to go to Texas to get their get high, why wouldn't you go to the city that has more people than Dallas and has a more direct access to that Mexican drug pipeline? But there's one other fact that makes this ridiculous. Medicinal marijuana is already legal in Louisiana. It's not legal at all in Texas. So why would you leave a place where all manner of people are trying to start their own de facto marijuana dispensaries, where you got a lot of good old boys who have their hydroponic drug farms, both in the open and underground, and these guys, they're always bragging about the quality of their cannabis. Why would you bypass all that just so you can go to a city to a state where they will lock you up and throw away the key no matter how low quality the drugs. I mean, these guys were going way out of their way just to find some marijuana, don't you think? And notice how the white media and the Dallas PD do not tell what kind of connection these guys have with Joshua Brown? If these guys are driving hundreds of miles just to find this one alleged drug connection in particular, if they drive... 300 plus miles just to get to this one guy, then doesn't it make sense that they ought to have had extensive contact with him before now? You don't drive over 600 miles round trip just to meet one guy, bypassing much larger cities a lot closer to you that surely have better quality drugs if this is the very first time that you've ever met this man. There ought to be a paper trail a mile long between Joshua Brown and these alleged assailants. In other words, the kind of paper trail that could be independently corroborated by reliable sources and not the racist liars of the Dallas PD. That's what I'm trying to get across to you, family. Just looking at this, just at a glance, this story doesn't make any sense. On its face, it makes no sense that Joshua Brown, a man who was so scared for his life that he fled all the way to California, a man who had beef with other people, a man who was, to hear old Slee's merit tell it, that he didn't want to be seen testifying in open court, that this guy in particular, this man who was scared for his life clearly, and who was running for his life, he was concerned about being hunted down by unknown assailants, he decides in the middle of all that, right after the biggest trial in the country takes place, he immediately invites some out-of-town drug dealers to where he lives, because after all, if you can't trust a drug dealer or some drug addicts from out of state, then who can you trust? It doesn't make sense that some drug dealers who live in a state where marijuana is already medically legal would not go to New Orleans for their connection. They wouldn't go to the fourth largest city in America, Houston, for their connection. Instead, they decide to drive all the way to Dallas so they can find the one drug connect connection who happens to be the most recognizable trial witness in the country. If this man had enough guts to testify against a white female cop, what black man, let alone black drug dealer, seriously thinks that he wouldn't testify against them too? We're not talking about a guy who testified against a couple of low-level D-boys in some anonymous trial somewhere in Kentucky that nobody ever heard of. Joshua Brown testified in front of the whole world against the most wanted racist cop in America, and he sent her to prison with his testimony. You got a bunch of honest, regular, square black folks who would be nervous about being seen around Joshua Brown because everybody knows when you make the police take an L, they're going to be on your butt until they get something on you. Ask OJ. Better yet, ask all the people who have ever taken video of the police killing or harming a black person. The cops will persecute you and hound you for years just for having the guts to merely videotape them breaking the law. The woman who took video of Amber Geigers, she lost her job and the cops have been on her ever since. 
but apparently Joshua Brown, the big time dope dealer who had been so careful with his drug dealing that even the Dallas police had no idea he was a dealer, even when they'd been watching him for a year. They didn't know he was a dealer until somebody anonymously tips them off. All of a sudden, this guy who has never been on the Dallas PD's radar as a drug dealer, he suddenly decides to become the sloppiest, most careless drug dealer on the planet and decide to deal drugs literally in broad daylight in front of his own apartment building. Apparently, he can't deal his drugs in the apartment where no one can see him. He's got to do it out in the parking lot where the whole freaking world can watch. You know, I was always told that drugs were supposed to make you paranoid. Now, you would think that a man who was afraid for his life would be terrified to leave his home if he was on drugs, but instead the Dallas PD tells us that Joshua Brown was conducting drug deals outdoors in broad daylight in the middle of a well-monitored parking lot in front of his own apartment. Only a couple of days after he took part in the biggest trial in the country when the whole world has seen him on television. None of this makes any sense, not from the perspective of the alleged gunman, and it damn sure doesn't make sense from the perspective of Joshua Brown. And you want to know the main reason that the Dallas PD's fraudulent narrative doesn't make sense? Sleaze Merritt. He was the one who told us that Joshua Brown was laying low and that he didn't want to testify because he was concerned about people knowing he was still in the city. So what does this scared man do? This guy who's got beef with so many people, what does he do? He gives his home address to some random dudes from Louisiana who he doesn't know that well, and then he says, hey guys, come to my place and buy some drugs. Uh, you'll know me, I'm the guy who's been on television all the time. You are the key witness in the most high-profile trial in the country. You get a white cop and a white female cop at that put in prison based on your testimony. You are a marked man after this. Every cop, sheriff's deputy, and state trooper in Texas, Louisiana, and California knows who you are. They know your face because they see you on TV. And they heard you give your name for the record. And they've had the white media plaster your face worldwide. So what do you do when every cop in Texas knows your face and knows your name and would love to have a chance to arrest or kill you? Why, you immediately invite three drug dealers to your home only two days after the verdict. And you set up a drug deal in open, broad daylight in front of your apartment complex. You don't do it inside the apartment. You do it out in the open where everybody can see it. Because nobody in law enforcement would be watching you. I mean, it would be crazy for him, for Joshua Brown to think, yeah, I helped to put a cop in jail. I'm sure the cops are not salty about that. I'm sure they're not watching me. And I'm sure that none of them are observing me right now. Hey, I've been dealing drugs and, you know, I'm sure the cops, well, I've just been too slick for them. But I can go ahead and do my drug dealing out in the open now. It's been two whole days. Surely the Dallas PD has forgotten all about it by now. I mean, it's not like anyone was talking about the case two days after the verdict, right? And these three drug dealers, none of them thought that maybe the most high-profile witness in America might be a snitch. None of them think to themselves, hey, this guy's on TV, and he just put a cop in jail. You don't think the cops have him under surveillance, do you? They're probably watching his place trying to see who comes and who goes. So the Dallas PD expects us to believe that Joshua Brown, their would-be drug connection, didn't think that his nationwide fame and notoriety with the police would be a hindrance to his drug business, and that his out-of-state clients didn't think it would be a problem either. So the Dallas PD wants us to think that Joshua Brown, who they had had under observation for a year, Joshua Brown who nobody gave the police any tips on any drugs about him when he was shot a year ago. Nobody gave the police any tips to Mr. Brown's alleged drug operation when he was testifying in court and being watched by the entire country, indeed the entire world. Nobody mentioned drugs about him then. Nobody had any p tips for the police after the verdict. Nobody thought to associate Joshua Brown's name with drugs at all. Not other citizens, not the police, nobody. Not any drug dealer trying to get a lighter sentence. Nobody associated Joshua Brown with drugs until after he was mysteriously murdered. Now, all of a sudden, he's the El Chapo of East Texas. 
This is what the Dallas PD want us to believe. That's the reason why I played that Dave Chappelle skit first, man. This is freaking, this is, this is farce. This is ridiculous. They're testing to see how stupid people are, but if you look at the responses just on Twitter alone, just as a small case study sample, you're finding that people ain't that dumb because of the fact that the black media has been smartening people up. Whenever the cops kill a black person, just say that there were some drugs involved. Now, some people are going to say, well, hasn't at least one of the accused assailants said that he did it? And there's three of them. And, and what happens if all three of these guys say that they did it? Let me tell you something. The Central Park Five were five young black men, and all five of them confessed to a crime that they didn't commit. So don't give me any garbage about, well, if they say they did it, that means they did it. Please, the police coerce confessions out of black people all the time, especially if they got something over your head. But more importantly than that, you look at what the Dallas PD claims they found in Joshua Brown's apartment. They claim that they found a few thousand dollars in money and they found about 12 pounds of marijuana. Now, you saw what Joshua Brown was wearing at trial. The dude's showing up in a Dragon Ball Z t-shirt. If he's got thousands of dollars, why the hell is it he didn't have one suit? Oh, he's got thousands of dollars, but he can't afford a suit. Really? And 12 pounds of drugs. Gee, some of the idiots online, you can tell that these are racist, these are white supremacists, or some black folks who are gullible for anything that the white media tells them. And they're saying, well, 12 pounds of marijuana, uh, that's worth a lot of money. Actually, it ain't worth that much, but for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and say that it was worth a lot of money. Then why is it that the three drug dealers from Louisiana who drove over 300 miles just to meet Joshua Brown, why is it that they didn't take the money or the drugs? They came there to get drugs. He had drugs. They killed him over drugs, according to the Dallas PD. And then they leave and say, oh, forget the drugs. Who needs drugs? Drugs are for losers. This is what you have to believe. You have to believe that these three individuals who apparently couldn't figure out how to get to New Orleans, they couldn't figure out how to get to Baton Rouge, they had to go to Texas for their drugs, but they didn't want to go to Houston. Apparently Houston was too close and had too many people for their tastes. So instead, they go all the way to Dallas because Joshua Brown, whose face has been plastered all over TV, he's got the best weed in the country, apparently. You, you got to go to the guy who's on TV. He's famous, man. Like those, he like those sleazy lawyers you see on TV. Don't buy your drugs from this nondescript guy over here. Why? He's never been on TV before. You want to trust a guy who's never been on TV? I don't mean to be flippant or sarcastic about this, but it's a matter of if you take the Dallas PD seriously, that's what you have to believe. You got these three crackheads or these three incompetent D-boys who decide that they want to find the most high-profile witness in the country. And we're going to trust that if things go south, if he ever gets his butt in a crack and he needs a get-out-of-jail-free card, we're sure that he won't snitch us out. I mean, he just had, he had enough courage to testify against a white female cop in court and get her sent to prison. But, uh, but hey, I'm sure that he, won't, he wouldn't send a brother to prison, right? We have to believe that they would be that dumb. And we would have to believe that Joshua Brown, who has successfully run apparently the biggest drug operation in East Texas, right, uh, literally right under the police's nose, Amber Geiger's had no clue about it. The police who were only two blocks away, their precinct house only two blocks away, they didn't know about it. And the neighbors who suddenly tipped the Dallas PD off and all the time that he had been in Botham John's apartment complex, they didn't know about it. Botham John surely didn't know about it. But all of a sudden he gets killed and now everybody in town goes, oh, now we remember he's a drug dealer. Now we remember. But just before he gets himself killed, Joshua Brown decides, I know that my face is seen all over the world. Let me go ahead and deal some drugs. This is a great time to deal some drugs with the eyes of the world on me. And every cop in Texas looking to bust me. Come on, folks. There are some people who are so simple, they believe anything they're told, so long as it's white power telling it to them. You can believe it. Why? Because the white media said it. This is the same white media who said that Saddam Hussein had WMD. Oh, he's got all these WMDs. He's got chemical and biological weapons. 
We know that he does. This is what the Dallas PD is putting out there. Because it's a matter of, we're A, we've already gone in for a penny, now we're in for a pound. We're piling up the racist absurdities. We've already had the Aunt Jamami moment with Tammy the Mammy and that bailiff and both of them John's own bootlick brother. Hell, as long as we're being silly, let's go all the way with it. Hey, that that Joshua Brown guy, he, he we, the, we didn't kill him. The Dallas P didn't kill him. We didn't kill him. Why? He was a drug dealer. Didn't you know he was a drug dealer? You guys been watching him for a year. And by the way, when he was shot, you better believe when you go to the hospital after you get shot, you better believe they're going to be doing um, drug tests on you. They don't just you don't just get to go to the hospital after you get shot. And it's a matter of, oh, there's not going to be any toxicology done. They do it simply as a matter of course. So in all this time, nobody's ever mentioned drugs in relation to Joshua Brown. The police have never had any tips. From a man who lived in an apartment complex with a racist cop. Only a couple of blocks away from the Dallas precinct, from a Dallas precinct house. And no, and none of this stuff ever came to light until now. You know, they say that when you commit a crime, that you make at least a hundred mistakes. And that if you can remember 10 of them, you're a genius. Well, the Dallas police committed more than a hundred mistakes on this one. And these clowns aren't geniuses. White power is a lie. And it's done nothing but lie for over 500 years. Don't you dare go calling yourself believing any of this garbage now. And don't go believing any of the black bootlicks who get out there spewing the white media line. Sleaze Merritt in one breath says that Joshua Brown, quote, was really bothered by the fact that he was given a lot of exposure from the trial. A lot of unwanted attention. That's what Sleaze Merritt says. But then he also believes the Dallas PD and the Dallas PD make it clear this guy was not at all bashful about the attention he'd gotten. Why he was conducting drug deals in broad daylight in front of his apartment building. Because apparently being inside would have been a little bit, I guess he figured that that wouldn't have been quite courteous enough. I like to do my drug dealing out in the open where everybody can see me. I'm proud with my drug dealing. All, every one of the white media's mouthpieces contradict the other one. But the one thing that they're all being consistent about is, uh, we don't think the Dallas PD did. The Dallas police didn't kill Joshua Brown. Joshua Brown was a drug dealer. He, the Dallas police didn't do it. No matter what you believe about who did, the Dallas police didn't do it. And that's what, that's the point that the white media wants to get to. Let's go ahead. We need to manufacture some headlines that say the Dallas PD didn't do it. The Dallas PD didn't do it. So this just goes to show they threw this crap together, slapped it together at the last minute. This is what the hell these scumbags are about. You got the most high profile witness in the country who gets gunned down and the police do not think, hey, you think the guy who tried to kill him last year took a second shot at him? The, it was Kendall Morris, his own lawyer, who said that the police and the investigators had not spoken to Kendall Morris since Joshua Brown was killed. This none of this see for God's sake, you wouldn't make it through an episode of CSI or Law and Order if you saw this happen. You'd be like, God dang, no cops can be this stupid. So how much do you have to have piled up before you look and say, hmm, this does smell suspicious? And by the way, speaking of Kendall Morris, you can bet that this guy, his case is going to be quietly buried. He's going to be given a slap on the wrist in comparative terms. His murder charge will be pleaded down to nothing, most likely. He's already out of jail on bail right now. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction that with Joshua Brown dead, the Dallas DA's office is suddenly going to decide that they can't proceed with the prosecution against Kendall Morris. Well, we can't proceed with a murder charge. We can't pursue serious time against him because, well, the key witness is dead. All of a sudden, the white police's forensic and ballistic expertise, that all of a sudden, that won't be able to hold up in court. That's not enough to get a black man convicted. Why? You have to have eyewitnesses. See, Kendall Morris is, to hear the white media tell it, he's just some street punk. He's nobody special, though he sure seems to be getting extra special treatment from the Dallas authorities now, isn't he? 
I mean, Kendall Moore is supposed to be just another black man who committed a black-on-black -black crime, right? The prisons are full and overflowing with black men who had witnesses and evidence that proved their innocence. But they still got convicted anyway, not based on eyewitness testimony, but just based on circumstantial evidence given by the state. All the state's got to do is bring in a couple of bl a ballistic expert, same one who gives the same speech every trial he goes to. And you also go ahead and bring in some of the crime scene guys to show the photos and say, why, if this nigger, I mean, if this black guy didn't do the kill, who did? And the jury says, damn right, the prosecution doesn't have to prove he did it, that nigger must prove that he didn't. That's the way it works, but not for Kendall Morris. Man, we found the one black man in America who white folks are colorblind about. Amazing how that works. I mean, it's not as if Kendall Morris has Johnny Cochran representing him. And how the hell did this guy make bail anyway when 95% of black defendants can't because the bail is usually... The fact that they got to come up with some money at all is more than most black folks can do. Whenever they start naming that statistic that says like 80% of Americans could not come up with $400 in an emergency, they're talking about 90% of black folks when they say that. Oh, but Kendall Morris, who apparently believes in gunning down people at the local strip club, this street punk, who apparently is nothing special, apparently he can come up with thousands of dollars on a freaking whim. How low was his bail anyway? Was his bail like five bucks? Does any of this make sense? I mean, Kendall Morris was not charged with robbery. This was murder and attempted murder he was charged with. So I'm going to make a little prediction here. The Dallas DA's office will suddenly lose their ability to successfully prosecute black men. And the DA's office in Dallas will suddenly pretend that because Joshua Brown isn't able to testify, well, that means that they can't put Kendall Morris away for any real length of time. So we're just going to offer him so no nothing plea deal slap on the wrist. And if anybody asks any questions, well, look, without Brown, we just don't have a strong enough case why you can't put a black man in prison based on circumstantial evidence. And after all, uh, the shooting happened at a strip club. And I mean, how many eyewitnesses were there? there at a strip club it took place the murder that kendall morris committed last year took place at a strip club not the middle of a cornfield you're telling me that in dallas there were no freaking eyewitnesses at a strip club but i'm telling you now this is how kendall morris's involvement in this whole filthy affair is going to be buried and covered up and when Kendall Morris's non-sentence gets handed down, you can bet that the judge won't be giving him a hug. The bailiff isn't going to be stroking his dreadlocks. And the family of Joshua Brown, they won't be offering him any hugs either. And you know who else won't be doing anything? Sleaze Merritt won't be lecturing us about how great it is that mercy won out over justice. This is how white power operates. Kendall Morris will be allowed to remain free because he's one of white supremacy's stealth hitmen in the black community. And the three patsies who the Dallas PD are and the white media are trying to pin this on, they're going to be talked about only until their arraignment. After that, the white media will give itself permission to move on, and well, there just won't be any more coverage of this case. And the Dallas DA's office will quietly reduce the charges or throw them out altogether. And just like with Kendall, they'll claim that the case just wasn't strong enough. And the Dallas DA's office, if anybody does ask why it is that you didn't do a full court press on the Joshua Brown prosecution, what they'll say is, well, you know, Joshua Brown was a drug dealer. It was in all the white media and a jury... They just wouldn't think that he was a very sympathetic victim, so we had to take what we could get. That's what's going to be happening. So, yeah, the Dallas PD, as far as they're concerned, the white media is going to amplify their little talking points here. But family, the most important thing is that we are freeing people's minds from the idea that you've got to go along with what the police say. The police are being delegitimized. And when the police are delegitimized, what that also means is people are going to look at them and go, why should we do anything that you say? Why should we not openly oppose the police? And when the enforcement arm of white supremacy 
has no legitimacy. It also means they have no authority. Authority is given by other people. You cannot bestow authority upon yourself. Authority is the sum total of the consent of everyone around you. If the people around you decide that they are going to accede to your orders and your demands and whatever your wishes are, then you've got authority. If they say, okay, we'll do what this guy says because we're going to go along with it, then you've got authority. Because other people are going to obey what you say and they will reinforce and support what you say. But if they look and go, who the hell are you? Then you have no authority. And that's where the enforcement arm of white supremacy is right now. What you saw in Dallas and what you're seeing right now with everybody saying, we don't believe you. The Dallas PD is saying, it was some black drug dealers who did it. And you got just storms of people saying, we don't buy it. You guys killed him. This ain't over. The white media realizes that this ain't over over. You're not going to be able to pull the old, well, we found some black drug dealer who we have a plea deal with. We found some out of town D boys who you never heard of, and we don't have anything that connects them to the kill, but take our word for it. It totally happened. The enforcement arm of white supremacy and the white media are not going to be able to prop up these lies and their black bootlicks like Slee's merit. They're not going to be able to just say, well, uh, this guy, he did have beef with people, you know. He was con he was looking over his shoulder, you know. And then have everybody say, yeah, he, but he wasn't looking over his shoulder for the police, of course. No, people are thinking for themselves. And this is a big problem for white supremacy. You see, breaking the enforcement arm of white supremacy, that's going to be one of those long-term projects. But as you guys understand, the most important thing that we can do is be consistent. That's what we haven't done until now. We let the white media tell us, dictate to us how long we get to talk about something and we drop the subject when they do. And we basically, if the white media says this is what happened, we go, oh man, that's wrong. And then we move on. No more. Forget it. No more. Joshua Brown was murdered and it wasn't by three out of state D boys either. It was by the exact same forces who killed, who murdered Botham John. The Dallas PD hasn't been conducting any sort of investigation. This has been nothing more than a cover-up. The white media has not been doing any news coverage. They've been doing a news cover-up. And we're not going for it. Now, we may not be in a position yet to punish the liars for their lies, but at the very least, we can make sure that they don't get to rewrite what we all know to be true. They're not going to sit here and bestow innocence on themselves. We have to condition people that when the Dallas PD speaks, when the police in general speak, they're lying their butts off. And the white media is not going to bring out any bootlicking chumps, any ambulance chasers, to say otherwise, Slee's merit, he doesn't have any credibility in the eyes of the black community. He's just like Monique Presley. He's just some fool that you see on TV. And family, this is something else that needs to be said. As black folks, we have got to stop allowing white media mouthpieces to speak for us just because we saw them on TV. Slee's merit has been a white media tool for the longest time, and this instance is no different. And now the family of Joshua Brown is letting this clown speak for them. And what a surprise. He's blame he was out there aggressively laying the groundwork to blame Joshua Brown for his own murder. Let's make sure that while we're busy refusing to believe the lies that come from the white media and come from the Enforcement arm of white supremacy. Let's make sure that these Negroes who are trying to get their daily bread from white supremacy, let's make sure that we don't go along with any of their disinformation either.